Welcome to Grace Abounds. I'm Pastor Jen Shaw, and in this podcast, I'm sharing my Sunday sermons from St. John's Lutheran Church, Palm Desert, California. I'm so grateful that you've joined us, and I trust that these words build you up in faith, hope, and love. In 1878, a successful American Methodist minister named Samuel Brengel traveled to England to join William Booth's Salvation Army. Booth was reluctant at first, saying to Brengel, you've been your own boss for too long. And so in order to instill humility in Brengel, Booth assigned him to polish the boots of his fellow trainees. Discouraged, Brengel wondered if he'd traveled all the way across the Atlantic simply to clean footwear. But then he remembered that Jesus washed the feet of the disciples, and he said to the Lord, You wash their feet, I will polish their shoes. Later, Brengel returned to the United States, and he was instrumental in the growth of the Salvation Army in the U.S., Just shortly before his death, Commissioner Brangle sent a memo to all of his top leaders. It contained a single word, others. Brangle demonstrated wisdom from above. Wisdom taught by Jesus to his disciples in our gospel reading for today. As the Gospel of Matthew recounts, This is the second of three times that Jesus explains to his disciples what it means that he is the Messiah, the Christ, the Savior, and how it is he will save the world. He will be betrayed and be killed, and on the third day he will rise again to life. He shares this with them as they are traveling through the region of Galilee, but they don't understand what he's saying. The clueless disciples is a recurrent theme in the Gospel of Mark. Jesus explains something to his disciples they don't understand, and then Jesus gives them further teaching on who he is and what he has come to do and who they are and what they are to do as his disciples. The first time Jesus speaks with his disciples of his death and resurrection, Peter rebukes him. And then Jesus rebukes Peter for setting his mind not on divine things, but on human things. Perhaps that's why the disciples don't ask Jesus here, because they remember Jesus' rebuke of Peter. After Jesus rebukes Peter, he calls on his disciples to deny yourself, take up your cross, and follow me. Follow Jesus in the way of sacrificial, triumphant, life-giving love. Give of ourselves for the good of others, as Christ gave himself for us. And so, instead of asking Jesus what he means, the disciples turn their conversation on each other, arguing about who is the greatest, presumably still assuming that Jesus is a temporal, national, earthbound king and jockeying for a position in his court, debating about who among them deserves the highest places of honor, who should stand at the top of their social ladder. This reminds me a, a bit of myself in the third grade, trying to find a lunch table as close as I could to the cool kids, and it's roughly about as mature. And it seems that the disciples are aware of this because when they arrive at the house in Capernaum, likely the home of Jesus' disciple Peter and his brother Andrew, the home of their extended family, the home in which Jesus healed Peter's mother-in-law, indicating that Peter was married and likely had children. When Jesus asks them what they were arguing about on the way, They are silent, I suspect, in embarrassment. Of course, 
Jesus knows what they were arguing about. Sometimes I picture Jesus with his disciples in the most loving way, sighing in frustration and thinking, guys. And so Jesus teaches them, teaches us, what it means to follow him, to live in his wisdom from above, to be truly great. Jesus takes a seat and gathers the disciples around him in this family home and says, whoever wants to be first must be last of all and the servant of all. Pause to consider this paradox of life in the kingdom of God. If you want to be first, be last. If you want to be great, be humble. If you want to be exemplary, be helpful. Serve others. Give of your time, talents, and treasures for the glory of God and the good of your neighbors. In the words of Martin Luther King Jr., if you want to be important, wonderful. If you want to be recognized, wonderful. If you want to be great, wonderful. But recognize that the one who is greatest among you shall be your servant. That's a new definition of greatness. By giving that definition of greatness, it means that anybody can be great because everybody can serve. You only need a heart full of grace, a soul generated by love, and you can be that servant. And then Jesus shows his disciples, shows us what it means to follow him, to live in his wisdom from above, to be truly great. He takes a child in his arms and says, whoever welcomes a child welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes God who sent me. Children are vulnerable in any time and place, but they were especially vulnerable in the cultural context of the ancient world because children in that time and place had no rights, no legal protections, no social standing. They were not to be seen or heard. They had no place among the adults, among the adult men, among the powerful in that society. But they have a place with Jesus. They have standing. They have honor. They have greatness. Jesus welcomed children and women. Jesus welcomed poor widows and despised tax collectors. Jesus welcomed people with broken bodies and broken hearts. Jesus welcomed two sets of fishermen brothers, Peter and Andrew and James and John, who got a lot wrong, but also, by his grace, got a lot right. Jesus Christ, after all, came to us as a child, conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born to Mary, a baby laid in a manger in a stable, the Son of God, fully human and fully divine, who emptied himself to join with us in our humanity, who humbled himself and died on the cross, who rose again to life on the third day, taking us with him into life eternal and abundant, who ascended into heaven, transcending the limitations of time and space, who is with us always. In his words and example, by the Holy Spirit, Christ continues to teach us what it means to follow him. The true greatness is serving God and each other with a humble heart. That wisdom from above is embodied in love for God and others. As James, 
the leader of the early church in Jerusalem, writes in James 3, Wisdom from above, heavenly wisdom, wisdom given to us by God, our creator, redeemer, sustainer, for living in relationship with God and each other every day, is pure and peaceable, kind and reasonable, actively loving, impartial, and authentic. Wisdom from above is pure. The Greek word that James uses here for pure is hagna, and it means morally wholesome, innocent, without intent to do wrong in a matter, a heartfelt desire to do what's right, to be who God wants us to be. In the words of a prayer by Thomas Merton that I deeply appreciate, my Lord God, I don't really know myself, and the fact that I think that I am following your will does not mean that I am actually doing so. But I believe that the desire to please you does indeed please you. And I hope that I have that desire in all that I am doing. I hope that I will never do anything apart from that desire. Wisdom from above is peaceable and gentle or kind. The psalmist declares, seek peace and pursue it. Jesus taught, blessed are the peacemakers. As James continues in his letter, those who sow peace will reap righteousness. We are to be people of peace in a conflicted world, resting in the assurance that God is good and wants good for us and is working all things together for good. And seeking to mend relationships wherever we can. In the words of the storyteller Aesop, no act of kindness, no matter how small, is ever wasted. Wisdom from above is willing to yield, open to a new perspective, reasonable. The very first sermon that Jesus preaches in the Gospel of Mark is, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. The word repent, metanoia, means to change your mind, change your heart, think differently, Act differently. Be open to the ongoing transformative work of the Holy Spirit in your life. If you are absolutely certain that you are absolutely right about absolutely everything, you might need wisdom from above. Wisdom from above is full of mercy and good fruits, lovingly active, sharing God's grace in our words and in our deeds. We are saved by grace through faith in Christ, and faith expresses itself in love. As James writes earlier in his letter, be doers of the word and not hearers only. Religion that is pure before God is to care for widows and orphans, for vulnerable women and children in their distress. Provide for the immediate physical needs of those who lack resources. As Martin Luther wrote, God does not need our good works nor our wealth, but our neighbor does. Wisdom from above is without a trace of partiality or hypocrisy. It is impartial and authentic. It is equitable and sincere. As James writes earlier in his letter, as the community of Christ, we are not to favor the rich over the poor, 
We are not to have selfish ambition in our hearts boasting about who is the greatest. We are not to use our words to cut each other down. Rather, we are to be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to anger. We are to show by our good life that we are wise. We are to welcome and care for children and the vulnerable among us. Salvation Army Commissioner Samuel Brengel, who once polished the shoes of his fellow trainees, was asked once about his secret of holiness. Brengel replied, Keep in the will of God, obey him, seek him daily, waiting at his gates. Read the Bible regularly. Never neglect secret prayer. Keep testifying to the grace bestowed upon you. Help others. As Jesus teaches us and James reminds us, wisdom from below is stubborn and selfish and false. Wisdom from above is peaceable and kind and authentic. Human wisdom is arguing about who's the greatest. Divine wisdom is welcoming the least of these. It's human to look out for ourselves. It's godly to look out for others. May we be servants to all. May we draw near to God and follow Christ and be open to the ongoing transformative work of the Holy Spirit in our lives. May we live in the wisdom from above. Amen. Thanks for listening. We're doing this every week, so make sure to subscribe. If you'd like more information about St. John's mission to know Christ and make Christ known, visit our website, stjohnslutheran.church. May God bless you on this day and in all the days ahead.